if it's just about keeping like my body alive mm -hmm. and my brain is totally dead, yeah. then I mean, that's just money down the tube, if you ask me. My breakup was hard because I loved her. It's hard to forgive myself. Is what I'm doing with my life good enough, meaningful enough? Who are you? What's the deeper truth? Let's do it. And we're pulling into a graveyard. Oh. Cemetery. Cemetery. I don't like cemeteries at night. I don't like them during the day. There's no way to walk that's not stepping on somebody. Oh, it's really uncomfortable for me. I hate death. I hate the thought of death. In my mind, I still believe I'll find a way to just not die. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having us. I want to talk to you specifically today about advanced directives. It's also called a living will because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow if you find yourself um, uh, incapacitated from some kind of injury or some accident. It could lead to great confusion if you haven't uh, told anybody that you love what you would want to have happen to you as far as pain control, do you want to be kept alive on a ventilator, things like that. So it's a lot to consider and that's what we're going to do today is go over a document called the five wishes. So the first wish is, who would you choose to be your spokesperson? And to consider the age of that person, the relationship that you have with them, the trust factor that needs to be present. Is this person going to really honor your wish? It may be different from what they would choose for themselves. So consider who you would actually choose to be your number one person um, if you were incapacitated and, and couldn't speak for yourself about medical treatments. Definitely go with um, my older sister. Uh, she's about three years older than me, so she's, you know, 28. She's smart, she's got my best intentions, and I think that she could make the decisions on my behalf. Um, I would probably go with whoever my future wife would be. Who would that person be for you today? Although we were talking about future, okay. Um, today, it would have to be my mother. My friend Tamaris comes to mind. She's kind of a soulmate of mine, and I just feel like she would be able to feel me even if we can't communicate with words. It's beautiful. Um, so the second wish is the kind of medical treatment that you do or don't want. If my consciousness is alive, like if, my, if there's like hope or if it's like brain function is still present, um, I'd like to be kept alive. Yeah. But if it's just about keeping like my body alive mm -hmm. and my brain is totally dead, yeah. then I mean, that's just money down the tube if you ask me. Yeah. I would want to be given a chance, uh, meaning if I'm in a vegetative state and it looks like all hope is lost, I would kind of feel like, give me a second, because I'm a resilient spirit. I'm a fighter to the core. Yeah. So even if it looks like I'm done, give me a second. I'm with Hannah. It's like, yeah, give me a week, see if I get better. If I'm not, like, put a hundred bucks each person that would want me to be around in their favorite charity and call it a day. I love that idea, yeah. The third wish is how much pain medication you want or, or don't want. And do you want to be completely pain free or do you want to be more lucid? Wouldn't that just depend on the circumstance? So sometimes pain medicine will actually create a drowsiness and, and sleep and a little bit of confusion. I think that's what they try to discern in the document. So would you rather be pain free completely and, and you know, disregard that, you lose a little bit of your mental um, capacity? or would you want to stay engaged a little bit with your family? I mean, I'd want to stay engaged, but that seems really circumstantial. That'd be really hard to answer. Mm -hmm. I'd say hook a brother up. Let me get that morphine. Let me, <laughs> let me get the Percocets or whatever, like pain medication you need to, you know, hop me up on if it's going to help me get better. And like, hey, hit me with it. <laughs> I'll take it. Give me a drip with a little pump. That's right. So I can do it myself. If the pain is causing me to not be present, and so I'm gonna be dissociated and distracted anyways, 
then yeah, I'd like pain meds. But so it's like, which one is gonna be, whatever one is gonna allow me to be most present. And the fourth wish is how you would want people to treat you uh, as far as touch or massage or music in the room or, you know, if you're in a hospital room. I think this is gonna be the first time we agree. <laughs> <laughs> I would like as many hands on me at any given moment. No, touch, massage, music. I believe really strongly in the power of physical connection. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Uh, maybe a little different. Um, I'm happy with touch as long as it's with the intent to like soothe or increase my state of being. But I just don't know if, and, and with close family, of course, uh, but sometimes, like, I, I find touch to be a distraction to what I'm trying to, like, work through. And if I'm busy, like, fixing my wheels and I'm getting distracted with touch, I'd be like, yo, like, I need my space. So the fifth wish is what you want your family to know. So as you read through the document, you'll see different things. But maybe as you can sit and be with me right now, you could consider what you would want your family to know if you were in the state where you couldn't actually speak for yourself. Um, what would you want them to know? I want them to know that I really did my best. And I think they do know that. It's okay to be happy even though I'm gone. Please be happy. <laughs> I would want them to know that I'm gonna still always be around. Look for that open cabinet door, something that moved and they don't know how it moved. That's me still around being crazy. I just would want them to know that I was really happy. You know, I just would feel so grateful for every one who would hear this message for being a part of my life. Thank you for taking the time to sit with me and go over this briefly. I would love for you to take this document home with you, to fill it out, to talk to your number one person, your moms and your sister. And if you felt um, open about it, to share this document with them so that they can fill it out for themselves, to kind of keep it going so that everybody knows what everybody wants and it, um, it really helps the end be very graceful for everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you, very you much. so much, Laurel. Thank you really just for the first time ever contemplating the five wishes. In those moments, you want someone who knows you well and cares enough to make the right decisions, even under you know, emotional distress. It was really great to meet Iman and Natalie. I'm glad that we bumped into each other and took this little journey together. Loved Laurel. It was good. <laughs> the best death day ever. <laughs>